الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على شرف الأنبياء والمرسلين محمد رسول الله صلى الله عليه وآله وسلم وسلم تسليما كثيرا كثيرا فما بعد my dear brothers and sisters I want to say to you let us live in faith not in fear I quote from a wonderful piece by Ted Bauer who is a writer and editor for White, White Rock Locators he says for a small amount of perfect for a small amount of perspective at this moment imagine that you were born in 1900 if you were born in 1900 on your 14th birthday world war 1 starts and and ends on your 18th birthday <coughs> 22 million people perish in that war later in the year the spanish flu epidemic hits the planet and runs until your 20th birthday 50 million people die from it in those two years 50 million in two years we're not talking about positive cases we're talking about deaths on your 29th birthday <clears throat> the great depression begins unemployment hits 25% the world gdp drops 27% that runs until you are 33 years old the country the united states nearly collapses along with the world economy when you turn 39 world war 2 starts and you aren't even over the hill yet and don't try to catch your breath on your 41st birthday the united states is fully pulled into world war 2 between your 39th and 45th birthday 75 million people perished in that war smallpox was epidemic until you were in your 40s and it killed 300 million people during your lifetime at 50 the korean war starts 5 million people perish from your birth until you were 55 you dealt with the fear of polio epidemics every summer you experienced family and friends contracting polio and being paralyzed or dying at 55 the vietnam war begins and doesn't end for 20 years 4 million people perish in that conflict during the cold war you lived every day with the fear of nuclear annihilation on your 62nd birthday you have the cuban missile crisis a tipping point in the cold war life on our planet as we know it almost ended when you turn 75 the vietnam war finally ends think of everyone on the planet born in 1900 how did they endure all of that perspective is an amazing art refined and enlightening as time goes by let us try and keep things in perspective your parents and or grandparents were called to endure all of the above while you are called to stay home and sit on your couch what's the difficulty now let me add my own footnotes to this if you had been born in 1900 when they introduced conscription for world war 1 and world war 2 and the vietnam war you could have been conscripted and become a statistic or maybe not even that because not everyone lost was counted or no or you could have returned in a wheelchair or worse ditto for spanish flu and polio i should mention malaria because many of us come from those places where that was the primary killer you are worried about jobs today think of the great depression an entire generation perished and an entire way of life was lost and there were no welfare checks 
or job loss compensation. My brothers and sisters, today we are living through a unique period of history. We do not choose to live in historically significant times. We could have lived perfectly under remarkable lives, mundane, featureless, and just plain dull. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in his wisdom and mercy chose for us to live through a period of human history that has already changed the world and all those who live in it and will be a watershed in the annals of the history of the world to be remembered, lamented or not, but never forgotten. This year, 2020 and 2019 are written in history. When people read history in ages to come and ask, who were the people who lived in those times? It is your name and my name which will be recorded. It is our lives that they will speak about. It is from us that they will draw lessons for their own lives. Just as today, we look to significant periods in history to give us perspective. Let us thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he granted us this blessing of living in such times and ask him for the strength to do it with honor and dignity and grace, with kindness and compassion, with wisdom and sagacity so that we live, we and our lives will be good examples for people to learn what to do and not what not to do. Let us see what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says about seeking refuge in times of stress and fear. To seek refuge, we must know two things. The strength of the one who we seek refuge with and whether that great one is interested in us. If the one we seek refuge with is weak, he cannot save us. And if he is not interested in us, he will not save us. So we need assurance on both matters. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reminded us about who he is, his power, his glory, his strength. And he said, A'udhu billahi minash shaitanir rajeem Huwa alladhi khalaqa samawati wal arda fi sittati ayyamin thumma stawa ala al arsh يعلم ما يلج في الأرض وما يخرج منها وما ينزل من السماء وما يعرج فيها وهو معكم مين ما كنتم والله بما تعملون بصير. Allah subhanahu wa taala said, which means He is the one who created the heavens and the earth in six eons. And is established on his throne, on the earth. He knows all that enters the earth and all that comes out of it, as well as all that descends from the skies and all that ascends to them. And he is with you wherever you may be. And Allah sees all that you do. It is essential that we read the Quran, that when we read the Quran, it is essential to allow the words to sink into the deepest recesses of our hearts and allow them to illuminate that space and drive out the darkness of doubt and fear and depression and anxiety and grief. Just as light and darkness are mutually exclusive, so are the nur of the knowledge, the irfan of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and all negativity. Darkness is the name for the absence of light. So also depression, anxiety, stress and fear are the names for the absence of faith, absence of iman and absence of yaqeen. The two cannot exist together in the same heart. The presence of one is the sign of the absence of the other. Let us check what is in our hearts. Let us work on lighting the lamp of the nur of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by recognizing his signs in the creation around us and in his kalam 
and ensure that our hearts are alive by checking to see if they respond to it. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala identified the reaction of our hearts as a metric to judge the health of our faith. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, إِنَّمَا الْمُؤْمِنُونَ الَّذِينَ إِذَا ذُكِرَ اللَّهُ وَجِلَتْ قُلُوبُهُمْ وَإِذَا تُلِيَتْ عَلَيْهِمْ آيَاتُهُ زَادَتْهُمْ إِيمَانًا وَعَلَىٰ رَبِّهِمْ يَتَوَكَّلُونَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has said in Surah Al-Anfal, which means the believers are only those who, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is mentioned, their hearts shiver with His awe and majesty and glory. And when His ayat, the Qur'an, are recited unto them, they, these ayat, increase their faith. And these people put their trust in the Rabb Jalla Jalal. My brothers and sisters, I remind you and myself, it is not how much Quran we know, how much we study, how much or how we recite it, but what it does to us, that is the measure of our Iman and a cure for our stress. As we listen to the Quran or recite it, let us stop from time to time and ask, what is this ayah doing to me? Is it doing anything at all? What does that mean in terms of my faith, in terms of my Iman and Yaqeen? Let us ask this question. Ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to fill your hearts with His glory and majesty, which will automatically drive out every fear and anxiety. Ask what is happening to me when I hear this ayah. Is anything happening or not? Remember what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said about what must happen. Is that happening? If it is, may Allah grant you steadfastness and increase your yaqeen. If not, what do you plan to do about that? This is more important than life and death. It's not a life and death matter. It is even more important than that. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, I repeat this ayah of Surah Al-Hadith. هُوَ الَّذِي خَلَقَ السَّمَوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضَ فِي سِتَّةِ أَيَّامٍ ثُمَّ اسْتَوَى عَلَى الْعَرْشِ يَعْلَمُ مَا يَعْلِمُ يَعْلَمُ مَا يَلِجُ فِي الْأَرْضِ وَمَا يَخْرُجُ مَا وَمَا يَخْرُجُ مِنْهَا وَمَا يَنْزِلُ مِنَ السَّمَاءِ وَمَا يَعْرُجُ فِيهَا وَهُوَ مَعَكُمْ أَيْنَمَا كُنْتُمْ وَاللَّهُ بِمَا تَعْمَلُونَ بَصِيرٌ الله سبحانه وتعالى said and I repeat this ayah وَالَّذِي خَلَقَ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضَ فِي سِتَّةِ أَيَّامٍ ثُمَّ اسْتَوَى عَلَى الْعَرْشِ يَعْلَمُ مَا يَلِجُ فِي الْأَرْضِ وَمَا يَخْرُجُ مِنْهَا وَمَا يَنْزِلُ مِنَ السَّمَاءِ وَمَا يَعْرُجُ فِيهَا وَهُوَ مَعَكُمْ أَيْنَمَا كُنْتُمْ وَاللَّهُ بِمَا تَعْمَلُونَ بَصِيرٌ it means, as I mentioned before, Allah said, He it is who created the heavens and the earth in six ions and is established on the throne. He knows all that enters the earth and all that comes out of it, as well as all that descends from the skies and all that ascends to them. He is with you wherever you are, wherever you may be. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sees all that you do. Now, brothers and sisters, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told us three things in this ayah. Number one, he said, Allah is the one who created everything that exists. The big and the small, the powerful and the powerless, the beneficial and the harmful. What we can see and what we cannot see. What we know and what we do not know. The perceivable and un unperceivable. Everything created by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone. Number two, that he knows Jalla Jalaluhu, whatever happens in his creation 24-7 real time as it is happening. He knows all that enters the earth and all that comes out of it. He knows all that descends from the skies and all that ascends to them. He knows because he is the one by whose order it all happens. Third thing, he said that he is with you wherever you 
you may be. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sees all that you do. There are three bases. These, three, these things are the three bases of, of our comfort. Number one, that he is the one who made everything. Number two, <clears throat> he knows what is happening to it all the time. And number three, he is with us and he is seeing us. What more can we ask? The question to ask ourselves, however, is how much of this do we know? I do not mean intellectually. I mean viscerally, deep inside us, with total certainty, which is reflected in our lives, not just belief alone, but true knowledge that Allah is the one who created everything, that Allah is in control of everything, that he knows what is happening to it all the time, that he is making it happen, and that he is with me. He is with you, wherever I might be, whatever the situation, whatever the difficulty, whatever the ease, Allah is with me and Allah is seeing me as I am. Does the knowledge of who Allah is and what he can do, does it comfort us? We know the ayah, but do, but do, does the ayah have any effect on us? The key is, that all this will happen only if we spend time to reflect and work on our relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The only relationship that is primordial and eternal. The only relationship that does not end with death. The only relationship which entitles us to his mercy and forgiveness. The relationship we have thanks to his messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. In whose ummah Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in his infinite mercy and wisdom decided to create us and with whose followership he blessed us. The, 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 the value of being an ummati of Muhammad وسلم, is something that you and I are going to see when we meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on the day of judgment. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blessed us with, the, with being the ummatis of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa is the one whose path is the template for us to follow to become muttaqoon. Knowing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, knowing our relationship with Allah, knowing that Allah is with us wherever we may be, has two major benefits. Number one, it is a shield against sin and disobedience. And number two, it's a source of comfort and confidence. It's a shield because the one who knows Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and feels his presence in his life, cannot disobey. He can never look at or listen to or eat or drink or earn or spend or speak or act in a way that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala prohibited. His constant focus will be on pleasing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone, whose presence he or she is aware of. That is the essence of taqwa. That is the definition of taqwa. It is for the muttaqi that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala promised. وَمَنْ يَتَّقِ اللَّهَ يَجْعَلْ لَهُ مَخْرَجًا وَيَرْزُقْهُ مِنْ هَيْثُ لَا يَحْتَسِبْ وَمَنْ يَتَوَكَّلَ عَلَى اللَّهِ فَهُوَ حَسْبُهُ إِنَّ اللَّهَ بَالِغُ أَمْرِهِ قَدْ جَعَلَ اللَّهُ لِكُلِّ شَيْءٍ قَدَرٍ Allah said in Surah Talaq, Ayah 2 and 3, And whosoever has taqwa of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He, Allah Jalla Jalaluhu, will make a way out for him to get out of every difficulty. And he, Jalla Jalala, who will provide him from sources he could never imagine. And whosoever puts his trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then he, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, will be sufficient for that person. Verily, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will accomplish his purpose. Indeed, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has set a measure for all things. My brothers and sisters, taqwa is the root of all goodness. Taqwa is reflected in our actions. Taqwa is not what we know, but what we do. Taqwa is the best resource, the greatest wealth. Taqwa is the result when we know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the creator, the doer, and that he is with us wherever we may be. Taqwa will ensure that all our difficulties are solved and that we are provided from sources we could not have imagined. That is what we must work on to become muttaqoon. It is those who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala addressed 
and he asked, أليس الله بكاف عبده ويخففونك بالذين من دونه ومن يضلل الله فما له من هاد Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Is Allah not sufficient for his slave? And yet, they try to frighten you with those imaginary things they worship besides Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But he whom Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala leaves to go astray can never find any guide. My brothers and sisters, I ask you and myself, is Allah enough for us? What do you think? Who then are we afraid of? What then are we afraid of? We know Allah is with us. We know that to him is our return. We know that he is the most merciful, most forgiving. My brothers and sisters, let us live as those who know Allah, recognize Allah, have a relationship with Allah and look forward to meeting with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and have total faith and trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone. Let us live as the true followers of Muhammad Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa by whose name, by association with whose name as the Ummatis of Muhammad sallallahu we will be called forth on the day of judgment to stand before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Let us live as role models for others, showing them how to live with dignity and grace, with compassion and courage, with fortitude and strength in times of hardship and danger. Let us use these times to get closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to increase our reliance on Him. Let us live in faith, not fear. Rabbana والحمد لله رب العالمين والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته